Hello YouTube. Right, today we are going to be sexing the kits that are now um, 10 days old. They were um, born last Thursday. So they were a week old on Thursday, so it's Saturday today. So yeah, nine, 10 days old. Um, and what I've done is I've set up um, a couple of tubs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, one out at a time sex it and then i've got a tub for the males and a tub for the females so we'll we'll count see how many there is and then see what the split of males and females are so i will do that now i need to get the mother out and put her in a tub oh, sorry in a carry box just to keep her sort of stop her from getting stressed out while i'm doing it so we shall crack on i'll just move the camera so as you can see, I've got two tubs there, uh, one that says Hobbs and one that says Jill's. They're, they're in that hutch there at the moment, so you'll probably hear a lot of squeaking going on in a bit. <clears throat> and so what I'll do is I'll get the mother out first. Afternoon, David R. Uh, I've just seen your message. Um, what I'll do is I'll get Bonnie out, who's the mother. And I'll stick her in a carry box and then um, we shall go from there. Come here, Bonnie. Go. Hey. So this is Bonnie, the mother. Uh, I don't know if you can see this because I can't see my screen anymore, but she's... Um, I have her mother as well, which is Betty, and her dad's Charlie. So they're the grandparents who I still have. I'll just put her away. Okay, we shall make a start. So the first one out is a hob. I've noticed as well on some of them they have quite colourful markings across the front of the face. Whether it's whether it's dirt or not, I don't know. But that's one hob. If anybody wants to guess how many there is and what the breakdown of them are, whether male or female, feel free to go ahead. Another hob. So that's two hobs. Third one, and he's also a hob, so that's three boys. Number four, also a hob, that's four boys. Number five, also a hob, that's five boys. Number six, a little girl, so the first Jill, so that's five boys and a girl. And then number seven, another hob. So that's, I think that's it.
So I'll just show you the nest. That's where they've come out from. And there's no more, can't see any more in there. And then you've got six boys and one girl. And that's your lot. So just for fun, no prizes for anybody that guessed seven and six boys and one girl. Just put them back. I think I'll probably be keeping the one girl. Right, I'm back. Um, I can see all your questions now, all your comments. Um, Hi, Les. Uh, yeah, sorry, Lee. Um, and Angela. And Eugene. Hannah M, do you keep all of the kits? No. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll rehome as probably... I usually tend to keep two of them. I usually like to keep a male and a female. Um, but there's only one female, so I will probably keep her. Because to be honest, I like working jewels. Um, and I might keep a hob, so I'll probably keep one of each. The seven, so I'll probably rehome five. If I can't rehome them, then then yeah, I'll, I'll end up keeping them because I'll be stuck with them. I, I I I wouldn't get rid of them unless they went to homes and people wanted them. Um, so yeah, uh, Nikki Jack, hi mate. Can you confirm best age to sex the kits? As I've read and heard many mixed messages. Thanks. Um, to be honest, you can sex them from the day they're born, but you don't want to be handling them too early. They're 10 days old now. Um, if you start, when, when the first born, if you start sticking your hands in there and the mother gets stressed, she will eat them. She can eat them or she can just reject them and abandon them. So you want to have probably total faith in your jill um, I know when Betty had Bonnie, Barney and Clyde um, four years ago, I was handling them sort of within, after the first week, um, just to see what there was. And Betty was totally fine with me actually doing that and, and, and handling them. So you, you can wait a week or two weeks, three weeks, but you can, because they're mammals, you can sex them from the day they're born. Um, but other than that, I would, I would leave them. Unless you're confident with your jills, not going to do anything. There's, there's no rush to sex them. They, they shouldn't be leaving the mother until they're at least eight weeks old. So to me, there's no rush unless you really want to. Um, so, yeah, next question. How much couple total? Um, what, is that, what, what do you mean? Is that to buy them? Um I mean, a lot of people give them away. Um, I used the last two litters that I sold, I asked for £10 each. And that's mainly more, it's not to make money. I don't look at making money out of them. Some people do. It's more just to show that if someone's willing to pay £10, then they're willing to want that kit, want that ferret and look after it for its life type thing rather than just, you're giving them away and people taking them and then abandoning them or whatever. Um, uh, so next one, uh, Angela, I say 10 altogether. You were close, uh, seven, same with Lee, nine in total. Seven would be my guess, Eugene, yeah, you were right. I uh, go eight then, so no, you're wrong. Uh, well done, <laughs> Eugene. Uh, so next question, um, Karina Poser. Hi, I'm going to be getting two Jills when they are born is it better to have them from the same litter or doesn't it matter they're going to be no pets uh, no it doesn't matter um if you get them at eight weeks old they will and you introduce them with each other they, they ferrets are sociable animals 
they like to be in groups um so they will play together and they'll bond together when i got my first three hobs I think about eight years ago now which was uh no seven years ago charlie harry and louis there was three hobs and then i got they were all brothers and then i got betty and wilma the following year and they were from separate litters and they lived together and they've all been fine together uh, it, it just varies when you introduce um younger ferrets to older ferrets you tend to get a hierarchy where they will compete to be like alpha male or alpha female and they'll fight not always but they can do so if you're getting two ferrets at eight weeks old and it shouldn't you should be fine um so and also they're going to be indoor pets so yeah they, they should be fine should be perfectly okay um leaf fountains i always wait a week you know take it that's for sexing them yeah um nikki jack mega mate thank you mike to now seven days old today hope they're going you should do well um the how old do you start working them um i work them from this season so the the bond the, the uh a week old now we're in may so the two that i keep if i keep two i will work them this, this september so from september onwards um i will take them out getting used to having the collars put on going down the ferret uh, rabbit holes and then i will work them with the older ferrets that i'll take with them and just give them a chance to sort of run through the rabbit ones they've got to start at some point and six months old the, the wean from the mother if they're in the wild they would have to go out and fend for themselves so yeah this is the same year uh rachel henley how often do you work them um if i when the ferreting season well rabbiting season starts i'll go out every week um and depending on how many ferrets i've got i will sort of rotate them around each week sometimes go twice a week depending on how much i've got to do so i might take anywhere up to four or five ferrets with me and then i will the next time i will maybe take two or three different ones and just keep rotating them around but they'll all tend to get a go um if i can it just it varies i suppose on on the sort of the season how much work i've got to do and usually what ferrets are working best just grab a drink um but yeah it, it, like i say you can, you can work them from six months old so any that are born thought this this year there's going to be ferrets i've got um daisy in this hutch here when she comes into season in the next probably this next week or so i'm going to breed off her so they'll be um by the time they're born they'll be eight weeks behind the other litter so there's still no problem with work in them come september any other questions i think that's about it for now i'll just give you a quick scan that i'll tell you what i'll get uh, the father out Now, this is um, Billy. He's an albino complete hob. So he's in a hutch on his own at the moment. Um, he was one of last year's kits. So he's, he's a year old this year, I think. Um, yeah, th yeah, he's one of last year's kits. So he'll be a year old this year. He is the father of them kits. And he will be the father of um, Rosie's kids when when she gets a go when she comes into season. So he'll be the father of the two kids, two litters of kids. He's a complete hob. So when I've got the second litter off him, he will. I'm going to have him vasectomised, and then they can all go together in the penthouse, and I won't have to worry about fighting or. Ferrets coming into season. Um, 
all my other hobs that have a castrated um lee do you feed them raw from weaning uh yes all my ferrets i feed them raw all year round uh, when they are around four weeks old they'll still be blind uh, they'll start venturing out of the nest and they will actually eat food they'll have the teeth but they won't be very big and they'll start sort of trying to eat me and what i'll feed them which i've just got today actually i've got two kilos of mince uh from the local butchers who i sell rabbits to um i'll start them off on mince with um maybe a bit of raw egg some goat's milk lactose free milk um and they'll eat that and then as they get older and the teeth start to get a bit bigger and they can eat meat better i'll then put them onto rabbit i'll just put a rabbit in with them and they'll all just chew on the rabbit um do you feed them raw right um but yeah raw all year even in summer you sometimes get a problem with flies but they're outside here so it doesn't tend to matter so much he's going mental now he wants to play he's getting a bit crazy um are you familiar with joseph carter mink man work especially his book video about training mink but that could easily be used on ferret also uh no i'm not to be honest let me just put him away he's going a bit crazy um no i'm not i've not seen his work i've, I've seen something online before about people that um use mink and have trained mink um but I've, I've not i don't know what you mean i'm not familiar with joseph carr i might go i'll, I'll google it afterwards when, when i finish on here i'll have a look this afternoon and see um raymond jateman easy i will love to come netting with you and meet the ferrets <laughs> yeah I, I get quite a lot of offers of people wanting to come with me or stuff like that um usually most people are far end of the country or nowhere near where i live to be honest um but yeah possibly depends where you are um lee Fowler, lee again i use a fan to get rid of the flies that way i can feed raw and hold all year um what i have done last year and the year before if flies get really bad i haven't made one yet this year you can make a fly trap really easy to make because I have a YouTube video if you want to view it. Um, with the you get a empty lemonade bottle, plastic bottle, cut the top off, turn it upside down, and then you fasten the like the, the top neck half into the bottom half, tape it up, and then you put some something to attract flies, like uh, liquidized cat food, um, some meat or something, something that's going to smell. And if you hang it up near your hutches, the flies go into the bottle, in right down inside it, into the bottom, and they can't get back up. So then you catch your flies in there. That, that tends to work. But to be honest, I don't tend to have a big problem with flies. I, I, I feed them, tend to feed them every day. So what I feed them, they will eat sort of that day. So there isn't, there isn't lots of food left lying around for flies. If I chuck a rabbit in, I might leave a rabbit in for two days. But when you've got, you know, 10 ferrets in the penthouse or thereabouts, one rabbit doesn't tend to last much more than a day. So, um, and if you clean them out regularly, um, you don't tend to attract flies. I've had a few buzzing around under here in the last few days, but there's nothing, there's nothing at the moment. So, but yeah. Anything else? No more questions. So what I'm going to do is I'll I'll leave it at that for now. I've been online well twenty minutes nearly. Uh, so like thank you all for tuning in. Um, this will be left on my um, YouTube channel. I think it gets uploaded as a video.
Well done, keeper. Nicky Jack. Uh, outstanding content, very informative channel. I'm a low land keeper, by no means a ferret man, but needs must. Another tool to add to the box. box. These ferrets will be used by my lads across the states. Yeah, I mean, ferrets, I mean, if you're a keeper, gamekeeper, then yeah, rabbits are a problem. I mean, I go out and shoot a lot. I don't do, not a gamekeeper, but. I do go out, I live on a, where well, I live here is in a state, so dogs here now. I, I go out and shoot a lot on a night just to keep on top over summer, plus what I'm shooting on a night um, keeps the ferrets fed, so I have a chest breeze to put them in. Um, so, yeah, the more I shoot, the more beneficial it is for me. I enjoy shooting, so um, I've had my firearms just over nearly three years coming up three years end of this year so I, I, I tend to shoot a lot of rabbits and then all what i shoot go in my freezer i have a chest freezer for them all and then they feed the ferrets over the summer and i can get out and shoot on a night in summer um Raymond Jackson, i live in bedford and we have a bad rabbit problem in bedford so you're south of me i didn't think there was any rabbits left south of yorkshire thought they'd all been wiped out by this new virus they're all getting um but uh yeah there's still quite a lot of rabbits around here uh, I, I get i tend to get a lot of permissions where it's horse there's a lot of horse breeders around here and trainers so you tend to get a lot of you tend to get a lot of permissions where it's getting rid of rabbits that are sort of causing damage in paddocks where horses are they're not necessarily rabbit warren so you can't really ferret them but you can shoot them because the rabbits will be coming from elsewhere to eat the grass. So I, I just go in on a night with night vision and shoot as many as I can. Um, and I have a lot of permissions like that where you just can't, it's not worth ferreting. So I tend to shoot more now than I do actually ferret, which is a shame really, but it, it's the way it is. And so I can get more ferreting permissions. Um, then I'll just carry on shooting rabbits. But yeah, so we'll call it a day there. Uh, gone on a few more minutes but it doesn't matter uh, thanks for tuning in and we will probably do this again some other time alright see you later